Hello everybody, ciao a tutti and welcome to Art with Ispi. Here we are with another beautiful, colorful, extra fun and pretty easy uh, art practice uh, inspired by the fall, inspired by pumpkins. I love the fall, my best, you know, my favorite season and I love pumpkins. And today I'm going to get inspiration also from a very famous contemporary Japanese artist whose name is Yayoi Kusama and uh, she does a colorful art installation, bidimensional and three-dimensional, and she play with a lot of pattern. So today I'm gonna use my mix and media journal. Use your journal. If you don't have a journal, use a mix and media paper. Don't, if you have a big piece of paper, so like, such as nine per 12, you can just cut in a half so you don't feel overwhelmed because you know that when we color with markers, you know, it takes some time. And so the bigger is the piece, of course, the longest is going to be the time. I will use a pencil for drawing. I will need an extra fine black Sharpie, a regular black Sharpie and all the Sharpie that I have available. If you have another brand, I also use another brand, uh, Shadow Art uh, alcohol markers. If you want to go with that, go with that. I just want to show that because Sharpies are the most affordable and the most common and many, many people have them available. You can really create beautiful artwork also with very affordable supplies. If you do not have any of those alcohol marker or permanent markers and you have the regular markers, go for it and you can still have fun. You can still try something new. This is a perfect activity to do by yourself. If you want to just kind of have that 25, 30 minutes of relaxation with your kids, grandkids, uh, homeschool kids, because you know, you want to make sure that you do artwork that can connect with the season and with their life. So it's more meaningful and it's going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to switch the camera and we can start. Please remember to like my video, to share them, to practice with them. Let me know if you like them in your comments. Follow me on Instagram. Ask me to join my Facebook group and uh, please, please, please share this channel as well. And off we go. Okay, friends, this is my mix and media journal. And as I usually do, I basically reframe so I can make my space a little smaller. You can do it with a ruler if you want something geometrically perfect. As I told many times, I like when things are well crafted, but still natural and organic. So this is why I'm tracing my line with a pencil. Just go slow and you have your square. I'm gonna place my pumpkins here. This type of art is totally abstract, so I really don't care and I'm not too concerned about the perfect shape of the pumpkins. So you start with a sort of an oval with a, a flat kind of base. And because we wanna do something abstract, we're gonna go and exaggerate basically the section of the pumpkin, okay? So we're gonna have, until I have a space basically. Three here, we keep going. One, two, three, and that's it. We can put like a little stem over here just to have fun, and I wouldn't do anything else. Now, on to the color. You can do any type of color palette that you want. You can alternate the three, four color. You can do the color wheel. You can do whatever. I'm going to, you can do one single color if you wish to do so. And I think that today I'm gonna play with some purple type of uh, palette. You can do the same, you can do different. You can do actually really any any single color that you like if you want a blue pumpkin go for it because this one is just as to is meant to be really colorful so because of this purple i uh, it's pretty intense i didn't start from the center but then i'm gonna kind of use this one to set my palette along the pumpkin I love this method when you kind of outline the shape and then you go with nice long strokes. It's like that you're tracing line after line after line. You can try and you can try to teach your kids if you're doing it because once they learn this technique, it will give a beautiful, beautiful professional coloring. And, you know, they are going to appreciate that. Now, this one that is lighter and brighter, I'm going to use it instead for the center. I'm always outlining the shape that I need to color in. 
so I kind of uh, contain my color and I don't get confused. And then I'm gonna proceed once again with this type of technique. If you or your kids or whoever you're doing the activity prefer to use a traditional coloring technique, remember that the short, the strokes, which is the movement, which are the movement of the brush, in this case, sorry, the marker, has to be small, tiny, because you can, you have more control and you can really fulfill the space without leaving any gaps, without leaving any scribble. What is important is that you don't change the direction because with the markers, you will see the strokes, right? It's not like when we paint with acrylics or when we blend with watercolors and you don't wanna have the strokes going all over the place. You can create sessions, you see, and then fill them up, but whatever visually and mentally work for you, work for you and for your kids, do it. As long as you have a method, as long as you don't do it just randomly right as long as you want to have a method i have students that divided the pieces in sessions and they color them session by session and in this way they can keep track of their coloring and they don't feel overwhelmed because sometimes mostly when they are young artists if they have something to color in a certain way like very professionally and very well and it's going to take a long time they might feel a little frustrated or overwhelm so create your method outlining and do all the same and now you see what i like is that we still see the strokes of the markers right but they create this beautiful pattern that is really pretty to look at it so it makes sense let's go over here something almost like a sort of a pink And I don't know you, but I personally love the smell of the alcohol markers, the smell of the Sharpie, and this noise of the Sharpie just brushing on the paper. If you don't like, maybe you can have some, if you don't like it, because you know, this is sensorial stuff, so it's very personal. You can uh, play some nice music so that sound of the music can distract you from the sound of the, the markers going on the beaker. So let's see, let's see, let's see. Let me play with some pinkish and stuff like that. Maybe here, because I have something so intense, I'm gonna go with something that is definitely lighter, but still pretty intense, right? So to create a sort of a color pattern and a sort of a, not symmetric, because they're not identical color, but the brightness definitely at the intensity can be comparable. So you create a sort of a balance and a symmetry through the color pattern that you are selecting for your pumpkin. And you can do, as I say at the beginning, with all tones of green. Blue, pink and purple like I'm doing yellow, orange, red, and you can act actually, I would do multiple. I would do one for each color family. Then maybe we can go to this slider that can somehow resemble that one, although it's different, right? This one is a little more warm and this one is a little colder side. So there are always so many infinite possibility with colors. Once again, it is important that you make a choice. So you can choose whatever, but with the purpose, right? With the intentionality. What I say to my students, say don't just grab the first color that you have available. Think about it. What is the color? What is the feeling that you would like to receive by looking at your piece? What is the feeling that you would like to communicate to others? It's like... A, happiness, sadness, tranquility, calm. So make your choice accordingly. So let's see this color. This one will go here because we say that this one is uh, the dull, calm side of our pumpkins, but I might repeat it this twice. So I might bring it here 
and I might bring it also on the other side here. Nice and slow. How relaxing this is. Beautiful. I'm not sure the way that they will look like. Maybe I will actually take this one again. If I can find it again. And use it here. Yep. Perfect. And off we go. The brown nice and neutral for this the stem perfect now switching on to our black we are going to slowly go over the lines that we trace with a pencil try your best to stay on top of those lines so we kind of cover the pencil with this black fine sharpie if you're doing this activity with very young kids or younger kids or children who are still learning, maybe you want to use a thicker, regular tip Sharpie. Just it's going to be a little, because it's going to be a little easier for them to control it and to cover the line. And let's say that something happened and you do not go precisely on the line, you can always double it and work on those lines, right? If the black is thicker in some area, it's totally fine because this is an abstract piece. And honestly, we can push it and stretch it in the direction that we want it. And at the end, you will be able to have a beautiful, beautiful project regardless of your skill level and the quality of the lines. Mostly with the black, as I say, with the outline, we can really fix them, going over them, using a thicker markers and whatever. We are going to do the outlines of everything. And now we are going to, I'm actually doing the outline of my frame as well. Probably I should have switched to the thicker marker, but it's okay. I might go over with a thicker marker, but so far I'm still not sure about the background. So this is why I might do it completely black and at that point the frame will be automatically out. Now we can switch to the traditional, like a regular deep marker and we're going to do dots, a lot of dots, and we're going to fulfill them with the black. This is inspired by Yayoi Kusama, which means that it doesn't copy exactly hair pattern with dots on the very, you know, one of our very famous uh, pumpkins, but it is inspired. It's my own twist. I like when we discuss uh, an artist and we interpret the artist. Uh, uh, style and technique and piece without copying. I feel that the integrity and the originality of our piece and the fact that we always like, you know, give it twist and add personality and change stuff is very important for me as well as for the student. Spread those dots. Once again, they don't have to be spread geometrically perfectly. They just have to make sense. So don't make them too, sh too small. Don't make them too close to each other. You keep doing it. 
some of the dots we will all will be visible partially right three quarter half and some of them the whole thing is something happening with the circle remember that you can just make it larger and fix it very easily with the black and it's already so nice and fun Voilà. Play also a little bit with the size. They don't have to be all perfect same size. Some of them can be bigger, some of them can be smaller. I don't want to put it exactly like that. I want to create some movement. This one, we are not going to place it exactly in the center. Otherwise, it would be too perfect to the pattern. And I don't want that. nice and big we keep doing it until we are all done and all the section of the pumpkins have these beautiful pretty big polka dots which is one of my great you know one of my favorite pattern i just love polka dots i always did since i was a kid and there are many people who love them who knows why we love them so much well they definitely made me think about ladybugs which is one of my favorite bugs. I remember when I was living, we were living in North Carolina outside of our house, specifically outside of the uh, kitchen uh, windows. We had really a huge family of ladybugs and we were so happy. They protected our garden and they were so pretty to look at them. The tiny one, the babies, very, very pretty. Now, once you finish with these dots, we go back to this extra fine Sharpie and we are going to frame basically our dots. Go slow and you just have to follow the line, the, the outline of your uh, black dot. Once again, if you need to go slower, then I'm going slow, then I'm going... Oh, sorry, go slower, take your time, focus, don't lose the side of your hand and the marker on the paper. Don't press too much on the paper because if you have too much pressure, then you cannot really move your wrist and hand freely. And I know that is something that will come, like if you're an adult doing this or you have experience, it's going to be a piece of cake but if you are a young artist or a child don't feel bad don't feel frustrated just because it's not coming as smooth and as fast as it's coming to me this is how you learn and this is a very very good practice for you just to go slow breathe trust your hand and once again embrace the imperfection because the imperfection our personality treat of this piece and they will make this piece your piece original and different from any other pieces also this is a simple piece. It's just fun and colorful, right? And it's inspired by an artist, but it is an extremely good training for fine model skill and hand and brain hand coordination skill. So even the most uh, the the 
most simple art practice includes so many benefits. I will never stress this enough. Exactly as we are recommended to practice physical activity and sport daily or weekly, we should recommend people to do art daily or weekly because the skill and the lessons that art teaches are really important for our development, mental, emotional, academical, like, you know, so we should, I advise you to include art in your life, regardless your background, your skills, your talent, and your experience with art before. Look how pretty and beautiful. Now you can leave it the way it is, so you can also do tiny little line to go around each uh, circle like this. And make it even more, you know, fun and interactive. Uh, So you can do it to, you can leave it like this, you can do this, what I'm doing, like tiny little segmented lines all around in every single circle, or you can do like I will to create some balance, I will alternate. So one width, one without, one width. So it's not too much, not too little. Try your best to stay inside the line that you trace around the circle. If that something happened, it's not a big deal. You can double the line, the black and fix it very easily. One without, one with. And now we can start also to think about the background. You can do, of course, you can leave it white. Um, but I feel that it will be better and it will feel like more refinished if we color it. You could color with the black. Depending also of the water or the color palette that you use. In my case, I don't know if coloring with the black will be kind of uh, you know ruin somehow instead of embracing this design with the black outlines that I did so I'm thinking that I would choose only one color because I I use multiple inside and I don't want to compete with the two colorful background but I think that I will reason about the fact that purple we have like a purple violet hot pink and some pink the opposite of a violet is yellow. And so we can play with some kind of dark and lighter yellow and orange to create this beautiful like uh, contrast between the color. Remember the complementary colors are the colors that are opposite 
side, they sit opposite on the color wheel. And these colors, because they create a beautiful visual um, contrast that makes the piece more attractive. So I would say that maybe I can do with something like that because the orange will require more blue and the yellow might be a little too light. So I will go with this light orange. If you don't have it, you can do with the yellow and then you can go over or maybe you can do orange first and then go over with yellow. But I feel that this is perfect because it's a nice, beautiful golden background that will embrace these pumpkins without competing with the design and the multicolor palette that we use inside. I'm doing these stripes sometimes because the lines are very long. If I see a wide gap, I will go and fill it. I love the fact that I will still be able to see some nice texture from my coloring so it doesn't look super flat. I'm gonna go slow and just dedicate the last three minutes to this colorful, beautiful, simple piece inspired by Yayoi Kusama. I will write the name of the artist in the descriptions to homage, right? But also to, for you, you can, you know, if you have time and if you would like to, you can explore online and learn a little more about these uh, visionary and uh, very creative artists. Up and down. Repetition of one simple element over and over and over teach us discipline. With the yellow, you might have some of the bleeding that always happens. And you know what? I used to get very upset about it, but I'm not. Look how pretty it's old for this tiny little bleeding. So the background is not so plain and so boring, right? gonna kind of outline the thick outline the pumpkin definitely this was a good color choice now if you have the I'm curious to to know what which color do you use to color the pumpkins and so which color did you use to color the background if you let it white or black or instead to play with the complementary so if you have a bluish palette, you could go definitely with a orange, darker orange than this one. And if you have a yellow reddish palette, you can go with a green background and that complementary color patterns will create a visual contrast that makes the piece very interesting and very pleasant to look at. If you feel that you need to take a little break, take a little break. Sometimes my students say, my hands hurt. And I say, of course, just shake it off, take a little break. And then when you're ready, keep going, but don't rush. Don't rush, don't scribble. Give love and attention to the piece. That is such a, a beautiful, rewarding and therapeutic feeling in really doing our best until the very last strokes and finishing what we started and i see the benefit of this practice every single day with my students few more strokes
keep going. Beautiful. Look how something so simple with some, you know, rounded line, circle, dots, and uh, markers can turn into something so joyful and so pretty. And I really hope, my friends, that you will do this practice with me, with your kids, and you will share it on our Facebook group. And I want to see really a storm of colorful pumpkins. Getting closer to feel the gap. And voila, it's all done. I'm going to switch the camera so we can say goodbye. Okay, friends, we did it again, and it was a lot of fun. This is my pumpkins, colorful, abstract, cheerful, joyful, inspired by Yayoi Kusama. I look forward to see your pumpkins. Please, please, please so ask me to join the Facebook page so we can share and we can really fill the pages with colorful artworks. Do this activity with your kids, grandkids, nephew, your homeschool kids. They will love it and it's so simple that they will be able to focus on the quality of colors and on the color palette. So once again, they will be able to review very important concept, very basic but important element of art, practice the fine motor skills, brain hand coordination skill in just, uh, you know, and also relaxing and chilling to this beautiful, beautiful activity. I hope that you enjoyed as much as I did and I see you next week with another colorful, wonderful activity. Ciao!